In recent lecture topics, you've learned how a battery management system can sense the physical quantities of voltage and temperature and current that it must know in order to safely operate the battery pack and to execute the algorithms that you'll be learning about later in the specialization. In this lesson, you will learn uh, for the first time about how a battery management system must control something instead of simply measure or sense something. Specifically, you will learn how a battery management system controls its contactors. When a battery pack is not in use, its internal high voltage bus must be completely disconnected from the load at both the positive and the negative terminals. And it does this to prevent a high voltage shock hazard. Now to be able to disconnect both terminals from the load, we require some kind of an electronically controlled on off switch that's capable of conducting large levels of current when it's turned on. Uh, one of these switches is used to connect the positive terminal of the battery pack to the load and the other to connect the negative terminal of the battery pack to the load. These switches must be electronically controllable, of course, and a device that can perform this operation is known as a relay or more often as a contactor when we're using uh, this device to control large amounts of current. And there are some internal differences to how a relay and how a contactor work, but both of them are high uh, current capable devices. They're on off controlled switches. The photograph on this slide shows an example contactor and the physical size of the device to give you some references may be about the size of your fist, maybe a little smaller than that. The red and the black wires that you see in the photograph are the low voltage, low current wires that control the contactor. The screw terminals on the top are where we connect the, the high current carrying wires. When we apply a voltage to the red and black wires, that closes the contactor and it makes a connection electrically between those two screw terminals and allows current to flow. When we remove the voltage from the red and black wires, that opens the contactor and it opens up or removes the connection between the screw terminals and that causes current to stop flowing. When we connect the battery pack to the load, it's not simply a matter of closing both contactors and then operating. We actually have to be quite careful when we connect a battery pack to most loads that we might encounter. And the reason is that many loads have a high capacitance to them. For example, in the vehicle application, the load of the battery pack is the motor controller, otherwise known as an inverter. And this inverter operates semiconductor devices and switches them on and off at very high frequencies, which would tend to put very high transients uh, on, this, on this voltage bus, and that can cause damage to the battery pack that we don't desire. And so the inverter also has large capacitors inside of it to smooth out these transients so that when the motor is operating, the battery pack does not experience this high level of noise caused by uh, the load that it's connected to. Uh, but uh, So that's a good thing, but on the other hand, if I started with a motor controller whose capacitors were initially at zero volts charge, and I wanted to connect a high voltage battery pack, and I connected both the positive and the negative terminals at the same time, what would happen would instantly an enormous amount of current would flow out of the battery pack to try to charge the capacitors in this load. This enormous amount of electrical current has the potential to cause arcing inside the contactors and to weld them closed. And after that point, they would never be able to physically be opened again. They'd be physically damaged. And it could even blow a fuse in our battery management system. So any practical battery management system for a high power application uses not two contactors, but three, where the third contactor is known as a pre-charge contactor. And in this lesson, you will learn how the contactors are controlled when the battery pack needs to connect to the load and how they are controlled when the battery pack disconnects from its load. The drawing on this slide shows how a battery pack is connected to the external bus and the location of the three contactors in this overall schematic. To the far left, you can see the series connected battery stack. Uh, 
and I've drawn a fuse in the center of this battery stack so that if the fuse were to blow, the pack would be divided into two parts and the overall pack voltage then would be divided essentially in half. So if a technician were to open up the battery pack, the maximum voltage that could be encountered would be half of the battery pack voltage. So the fuse is placed where it is to minimize the maximum voltage that would be encountered by the technician. The fuse is put there for safety reasons. The red shaded boxes are symbols that depict the contactors. And at the top of each symbol you can see two terminals with a thick draw line drawn above it. In this diagram, none of these thick lines or bars are connected to the terminals, and so all of the contactors are in an open state. When the contactor is in an open state, that means that the left side of the contactor is electrically disconnected from the right side. In each of these contactor symbols, you can also see that there's a coil drawn at the bottom, and this is the control mechanism for the contactor. When the coil is activated, the contactor closes and a connection is made between the high current terminals. When the coil is deactivated, the contactor opens and the high current terminals are then disconnected. The thick lines in the diagram shows the parts of the circuit that are presently activated. And the diagram shows a battery pack at rest. So all of the connectors are open, all of the contactors rather are open, and the only activated connections are to the left of the contactors. The load is completely disconnected from the battery pack at this point. Now, notice that I have activated the left branch of all the contactor coils, but the right branch of only the negative contactor. This connects the negative terminal of the battery pack to the negative terminal of the load. But at this point, the positive terminal of the battery pack is still disconnected from the load. The next step is to close the pre-charge contactor. So far, I have not changed this diagram. To close the pre-charge contactor, I need to activate the right branch of its coil circuit. And when I do that, the contactor closes and a pathway is formed between the positive terminal of the battery and the, um, through the pre-charge contactor, through the pre-charge resistor to the positive terminal of the load. So let's do that. At this point, current flows from the battery pack through the pre-charge resistor to the load. The capacitance of this load is able to charge because of this current flowing, but the resistance of the pre-charge resistor limits how quickly we charge that capacitor. And that ensures that the contactors don't fuse, that there's no damage caused to them. Uh, the battery pack current is limited by this pre-charge resistor. If all goes according to plan, the capacitive load is quickly charged up and we can move on to the next step. But for fault tolerance, it's important to check to see whether things are going according to plan. So one thing we can do is to monitor the temperature of this pre-charge resistor. And if the temperature becomes too high, then the load may have some short circuit inside of it and may be drawing too, drawing too much current. So we, if that's the case, we can deactivate the pre-charge contactor and deactivate the negative contactor and disconnect the battery pack from the load. We can also monitor the bus voltage and the pack voltage. If these voltages do not converge quickly enough to the same value, then again, the load may have some kind of a short circuit fault and the pack will disconnect. Or instead of monitoring the load voltage in addition to the battery pack voltage, we can monitor one of the voltages, usually the battery pack voltage, and the load current, which we have to do anyway. Uh, so we would then disconnect, uh, or sorry, we would consider that the capacitive load was fully charged when the current going to the load was essentially zero. And this might be a better approach since we already have a battery pack current sensor and we're already measuring the battery cell voltages, so we don't need to add an additional sensor to do this. If the pre-charge current does not approach zero quickly enough, the load may have a short circuit and the pack should disconnect. The third step, assuming everything has gone well, is to close the positive contactor. So again, I'm going to redraw the circuit here. And in this case, you can see that the positive contactor is closed and that the load is connected directly to the bus at both terminals. 
The third step is to close the positive contactor. Again, I've redrawn exactly the same picture from the previous slide as a starting point. If we determine that the bus voltage and the pack voltage have become close enough, quickly enough, then we can close the high current pathway. Uh, alternately, if the precharge current has approached zero quickly enough, we can close this pathway. We do so by activating the right branch of the coil of the positive contactor. At this point, all three contactors are closed, so the negative terminal of the battery pack is connected directly to the load. The positive terminal of the battery pack is connected through the precharge resistor to the load, but it's also connected directly through the positive contactor to the load. And because the positive contactor has essentially no resistance, this precharge uh, path, even though it's still active, carries essentially no current. The load is now connected directly to the battery pack through two low resistance contactors for a single low resistance pathway. The final step after the positive contactor is closed is to open the precharge contactor. We do this by deactivating the right branch of the coil for the precharge contactor. Uh, notice in the diagram the precharge pathway is now deactivated, but there's still a low resistance pathway for current to flow from the battery pack to the load. And at this point, the normal pack operation starts. It's interesting to consider what we should do when we're shutting the pack down. How should we disconnect the battery pack from the load? And the answer is not as clear. If the load is actively drawing power from the battery pack and I abruptly disconnect, then arcing might still occur across the contactor as I'm trying to open it up, and that might still weld the terminals together internal to the contactor and cause the contactor to be permanently closed even though I'm trying to open it. So one possibility when shutting the battery pack down is to activate the precharge path once again to shut the pack down in the reverse order from which I started it. But again, if current is being actively drawn from the battery pack uh, set, and I were to disconnect the battery pack in an emergency situation, then there might be more current through the precharge resistor than that resistor is rated for. And consequently, this resistor might turn into a fuse and might be destroyed. But remember that the entire reason for requiring the precharge circuit in the first place is because the load is often capacitive. That means that the load has some amount of energy stored inside of it. So if all the contactors were simultaneously opened in some kind of an emergency setting, the capacitor in the load stores enough energy that it's likely to supply the load for a period long enough for the contactors to open completely to prevent arcing from happening and to prevent damage. So most likely the battery pack can be disconnected from a capacitive load simply by opening all of the contactors without an elaborate shutdown procedure. To summarize what you've learned in this lesson, you've seen that there is a need to be careful when connecting a battery pack to a load when we're powering the battery pack on. Uh, it's very common for the load to be capacitive in nature, and for that kind of scenario, a precharge path is needed in order to charge the load somewhat slowly before the main contactor is closed. This imposes a need to be able to measure both the battery pack voltage and the battery bus voltage, or to measure the battery pack um, voltage and a current through the through the battery pack, and that saves. Uh, need for additional sensors. And finally, we also discussed a procedure to follow when powering down the load and that this procedure was maybe not quite as clear as the one to follow when powering up the load, but nonetheless you could experiment with both and see which works best for your application. So that brings us to the end of this lesson on how to turn on your battery pack.